Hello and welcome to CineTracer version 0.57. This is the new office prefab with our translites, and I'll show you the shot that we've got going here. Looks a little bit like the ending of Fight Club, doesn't it? So uh, let's hop into this update, and I'll show you how we built this uh, using the new prefab and explain the translites and a couple of the new things in the build. Okay, so first off, the new prefab is right here, and it's made out of parts that are available in residential and commercial, as always. So we're going to hit 3 and bring it out, and this is what it looks like by default. So you'll see that the translate is now a daytime image, and pretty much the office is the same. I'm actually going to get rid of these columns. They're just kind of there for suggestion. And let's go over some of the new parts here. So one of the new parts is this wall. So I'm going to duplicate it and bring it out, and it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty much just a bunch of cubes, but it looks very much like an office window, uh, head-to-ceiling windows with some dividers in them. And they will actually stack if you want to build uh, a two-story building, etc. And they are blocks, so you can go and change the material of these as you see fit. Next up, over here, uh, to kind of dress the inside of the office as we're starting to build this out, we have cubicles now. So if we go to our uh, residential, I believe they're at the bottom. Yep, we've got cubicle wall, uh, tall, short, and desk. And I'll show you how these are built. It's really easy. Hit 1 for the tall wall. And these snap just like uh, I hope you would be used to at this point with this system. And it's really a good case study for the kind of like modularity and power of uh, what I'm trying to get built here. Uh, the desk will fit perfectly here like that. And then we can use the short one and we've recreated that cubicle there. Put a desk, put a computer. And that is what's going on with the cubicles here. And really does show off what I'm trying to get done with the modularity and snapping system. Now, the fun part is actually this translate. So let's go ahead and we're going to look at this and we're going to make it into nighttime. So I'm going to grab an actor. This is kind of recreating the thumbnail that we had before, or that we have rather in the uh, building tab. And I'll grab a floating character, rather camera. We're going to hop into it. Oops, ISO down, open up. And I'm going to focus on her like this. I'm going to go like that. And there we go. We have some out of focus background. If you focus on the background, it looks a little bit like a picture. But uh, out of focus, which is like the majority of what I think most people are doing with this kind of stuff. Uh, it looks pretty good out of focus. So this is going to work pretty good for during the day. Uh, but let's show you how this gets switched into nighttime. So uh, first of all, with the translates, you can now pick uh, from a couple of stock photos here. So we can switch between these stock photos. If you make it this, it, it just becomes a color. I would set this to about 1 on the brightness. And you can just make a color or a green screen. And that's the way the screens kind of used to work like that. But if you pick an image, like that one is what we're going to do, uh, you can do an image. You can also load a custom image. Uh, nope, that's not it. I have it in here. You can load JPEGs, and they should be 16 by 9 to fit onto these 16 by 9 uh, translates for now. So let's go back to this one. That's the stock one uh, that we use for an example. And what we want to do now is pick our brightness and our exposure. So we're going to go to Twilight. You could also use completely blacked out if you want it to be very dark. But uh, Twilight gives you a little bit of fake uh, kind of like moonlight gi which i think really looks nice uh and let's switch this one to that and this one also to our night city and what we want to do now is look at the brightness so i'm going to swing on over here and you'll see that if we bring this all the way down it goes completely black and as you slowly bring it up you'll see that it gets bright in like a really nice way and basically it's designed so that the bright spots like get really bloomy and bright uh much faster than any of the dark areas. And this is trying to make it look like it's backlit, like it's a backlit uh, translate. And for this one, uh, it's different per image, right? And per taste and per exposure. But I think somewhere around 2.5, 2.8 is going to look pretty good. So I'll set those just roughly to it. They don't have to match perfectly, really. Does it matter? Uh, these are really meant to be kind of like out of focus in the background, like real translates would be. You don't want to ever focus or really light them up too much. And so when we're in here, I might ISO up to uh, maybe 200 here, something like this. And I think we have a somewhat natural looking background, very bokeh uh, inducing, right? So another thing that we have going on is I'm going to hit this and hit M, right? So we can kind of see the, the frame. Now, uh, this is not real perspective. This is not a, three, a real 3D city. So you kind of have to mess with this like you would in the real world with translates to make it look realistic. And something that's very new and experimental and not documented, we're still working on it, is if you hit up and down with the arrow keys, you can actually raise things by 100 centimeters. So that's going to be really helpful here. We'll do something like that. So we see the horizon. So I'm going to click down, 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 
Same with this one, down, down, down. We're going to have more of those controls. Uh, it's just kind of a preview of making things a little bit easier to uh, move around. We have a couple concepts with that. So we'll hop back into the camera full frame, and I think that's a more believable uh, horizon back there. She's on like a pretty high floor at this point to be this high, and you see a little sky. I think that's helpful, unless you're on like a low, bu low building. And there we go. So another nuance of this system is that these are actually one-sided, right? So you only see them from one side. And that's really important because that's going to allow us to fake some lighting. So I'm going to go ahead and grab, say, this uh, 18K. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to poke it right there. And you'll see that that light is actually coming through the back of the trans light. And that's important. So I'm going to go up, up, up like that. And we're going to tilt down. Uh, look at the intensity. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this. I'm going to turn the haze off, first of all. And I'm going to say, you know, let's make the light kind of like this blue. Right, something like this. I'll look at her. Right, something in this cyan world. And that's pretty good, actually. So we have, I'm going to make it a little bit more towards the blue side of things. Because this is very, kind of looking at this blue there. Something like this. And so you can light through this. And that makes it seem like this is actually lighting her. Right? So it doesn't quite work that way in the real world, but for this case, uh, for virtual sets, I think it's going to work really well. So it's going to be very simple now to be able to do uh, exteriors outside of buildings without them having to actually be 3D. And if you have a specific environment, like, you know, I'm thinking like Egypt with pyramids or something like that, something that's very unique or space or anything like that, you can just load these up like translites. We don't need the 3D versions just yet. Uh, I do hope to be able to create this with some uh, actual 3D cities in the future, but this is always going to be a fast and really performant way of going about it. So that's a quick update on the translites, and let's take a quick peek at the new terrain and foliage. So let's take a look at some of the new terrains here. We're going to go to building and exterior, and we really want to just focus on this one. These are all going to kind of get changed, uh, but this is the brand new one that I've been working on. So we're going to hit one and bring it out, and you can see that we have a new material here, and it's actually new grass. So. I'm going to switch into editor mode. I'm just going to bring someone out for scale. It's just always helpful. I tend to use her in this example because she's kind of wearing like an outdoor coat. So it just kind of makes sense. So now uh, we can scroll up to about a thousand grass here and we can randomize. And the grass is actually a much better model than I was using before, better textures, and it matches the ground floor a lot better as well. We can now change the type of grass. So I'm able to uh, add a bunch of new different grass types to this, as you can imagine. Um, as much as we'll need. We'll eventually do multiple types of grass, but this is just the beginning of the system, and I want to see how it performs on other people's computers. Uh, this is somewhat heavy to have this much grass, so you do not want to have like tons and tons of these uh, out there. Uh, I'm going to hop back here, and I just want to show you a concept that's pretty important. Uh, what you want to do is if you're making another layer like this, and you know your shots back there, maybe go to about half, like 500. We're going to run over to here drop another one, do like 100 like this, okay? So this is kind of the idea. And in most video game engines, this is gonna be kind of done for you, but for us, we want it to actually be done manually. So I'm actually doing the wrong type of grass, right? So we wanna switch it to this and then switch it to this. So we have just like less and less grass as we get further from the camera. And so this is for a scene that we're going to be like this close to her. And you'll see now that it seems like we have a lot of thick grass here. It looks really cool. And then you don't really notice that it's falling off in the distance, that there's actually less back there. You're going to want to keep this in mind as you do this. As you add more of this grass in there, uh, it's going to slow down your computer. And so just keep that in mind. So this grass is a lot better looking, a lot better for lighting. So if we go to sunset, you can see how nice this stuff looks. Um, getting this stuff to look good into the, under our lighting system, that's half the battle. Uh, it's not just making it, it's tuning the shaders and whatnot. And this grass that I've started to use now is really nice. And there's a gigantic library of it, and we'll be adding it in there slowly. You'll be able to have multiple types, like I said, all together. It's going to make really nice exteriors. Uh, I'm just going to kind of finish out this uh, update video with uh, dressing this up. So let's put some trees back here. It's got the wind kicking. We have a lot of stuff we can do with trees and whatnot, just haven't done it yet. Uh, slowly making our way in that direction. I'm just going to put some small trees here too, maybe like this, like that. Uh, we're going to definitely need a lot more exterior stuff. It's just, you know, a, prog uh, a process of getting it in and make sure that it all matches with the system uh, as well as it possibly can. So uh, with the new grass system, uh, just very, very good materials. I mean, I've been looking for this kind of stuff for quite a while. Nice ground material, nice um, grass. Everything's just looking really nice. And I think our, our exterior is going to look really good. And I'll start to put together prefabs for us so you can have like little mini forests. But just keep in mind, uh, 
the reason it's designed this way instead of me giving you an entire map that has uh, a whole forest in it is that many people can't load that. And you want to now start to build these uh, up to the point where your computer is still performing pretty well. Uh, that is the idea behind this modular system. And it allows us to keep the quality very high on things like this because we're not going to have uh, an indeterminate amount. We're just going to have one block at a time as we need. And that's how the system is progressing. So that's pretty much it for this update. Uh, again, just recapping uh, the new office. Uh, if we hop into residential, we're going to have our new office wall, uh, the cubicles. And if you want the translate, it's here under studio. And it's also in props under screens because technically it's a screen. These have all been updated. Your old screens might be a little bit funky now. They should kind of work, but you might have to go back if you're using these and just kind of update them as it goes. So that's it for this update and I'll see you on the next video.